and we have with us Xiao Yide, who is, you've heard earlier today, is um, an excellent thinker from Shanghai. Um, so what, what worries China, Mr. Chai? Um, Your turn. Okay. Uh, let me uh, go back to the, the topic of this session, uh, which is a new foreign uh, policy trend in uh, East Asia. I, I like uh, first to share my some observation in the uh, policy changing in mm -hmm. this uh, area. The, I guess the major changing is uh, U.S. Uh, adopt American first uh, policy in uh, two or three years ago. Uh, which more or less changing the political, diplomatical landscape of this region. First of all, uh, the, the U.S. defined China and Russia as a strategic competitor or adversary, uh, initiates trade war with China, uh, which I don't want to go detail. I have a, a wider impact on this region. Second, the U.S. Uh, exit the, from TPP immediately after Trump take the office. Third, uh, Trump tried to resolve North Korea nuclear issue by establishing a personal relation with Jin Zheng Un, but so far not successful. Fourth, uh, push uh, Japan and South Korea in economic arena, including raising the payment for U.S. Army staying in these countries, uh, while, of course, U.S. still keep uh, alliance relationship with Japan and South Korea. Having said that, I want to emphasize the major pattern uh, in this region unchanging, which means U.S. still share the dominance in this region in terms of uh, uh, number of uh, airlines in terms of uh, military existence and business uh, uh, community. In, from Chinese perspective, uh, of course, the major focus in this area how is how to deal with a persistent U.S. Uh, challenge, uh, as I say in this morning. But interestingly, and I only, you can find in past two or three years, China actually now in the better position to have a good relation, better relation with other countries. For example, they improve relation with Japan, with South Korea, even with North Korea, of course, at the same time strengthen the relation with Russia. That's part of the reason is due to the pressure from US U.S. push China, also push other countries. Mm -hmm. So obviously, naturally, as I, in Chinese saying, they're bound together, warming up, to try to uh, deal with uh, further pressure from U.S., from uncertainty from U.S. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, kind of things uh, uh, China uh, is now uh, facing. Also, I guess China also try uh, very hard, uh, as uh, Kevin described uh, a lunch speech yesterday, try to keep a good relation uh, with neighboring uh, countries. Uh, funnily, I guess last year I met Martin Wolf uh, in Indonesia. He said, chat chat with me, he said, I'll give you three advice for China. First of all, play long. Second, have a good relation with the neighboring countries. Third one, have a good relation with uh, Europe. I guess uh, more or less China is taking this uh, direction. I stop here. Thank you, Mr. Chow. One thing, I mean, when we talk about, sorry. Yes, please, everyone. Um, when we talk about uh, new foreign policy trends, obviously one trend is Donald Trump and, and what he's done, um, sort of, but another is, the way his outreach to Kim Jong-un has changed the landscape. And I wonder if I could ask you first, but perhaps others, um, has 
Trump's outreach to Mr. Kim, has it been, it, you said it's not successful, but has it helped in China's eyes or has it made things worse? Uh, I, I guess maybe help China to improve relation with North Korea. Uh, you <laughs> well, may, that that you, wasn't the idea. <laughs> yeah. you, you may recall, it's unusually, uh, since Jin Zhen uh, took over the office, there's never top leader uh, visit between North Korea and China until maybe two years ago. Until have this kind of things happen between Jin Zhen and, and, uh, and uh, uh, President uh, Trump. I guess uh, from perspective of North Korea, uh, Jin Zhen and try to improve relation with China as a leverage, as a buffer to deal with with US. Sure. So that's, you know, you can see in maybe one and a half years, they have a visit, uh, mutual have a three, maybe four time uh, yeah. meeting between yeah. Jin Zhen and Xi Jinping, yeah. either in China or in North Korea. Yeah. Previously, three years ago, no any very cold relation uh, between North Korea and China. Do you, I mean, do you, do you think, uh, and then I won't, focus on you all the time, but no, no I, mean, I mean, do you think, I mean, is it your view, I mean, obviously you're speaking for yourself, um, is it your view that Kim would ever give up nuclear weapons? After all, partly they're meant as a deterrent against Beijing as well, one presumes. Uh, I, I don't think so. I guess North Korea set very high condition for them to give up. If U.S. meet them requirements, they may give up. But of course, the conditions they set are very high. Yes. Uh, not necessary U.S. will accept that. Mm -hmm. Even they may ask a not necessary agreement between two governments. They want legislation passed by Congress. That's something maybe very hard for U.S. to do that. Yeah. That's something they learn lesson from other countries. Right. 